We're here at uh, today is Tuesday, uh, July 23rd, 2019. We're here at EAA with Frank Artizone, uh president of the Exponential Engine Company. Thanks for being with us, Frank. Thank you for having me. Can you tell us a little bit about the Exponential Engine? What is it and how is it different from what we normally see in piston engines? We had two objectives in building the Exponential Engine. According to the FAA, 31% of the aircraft accidents are related to engine failures of one type or another. Once an aircraft loses its engine, essentially it becomes a glider and the pilot is then forced to land at the nearest possible landing place. If you're in the high Sierra, it would be very hard to find a place to land. And even in a populated city, the places to land an aircraft are very limited. Therefore, we decided to provide two engines for the pilot. Those engines are compact, put together, and they appear to be one. The engine I'm standing next to actually is two engines. This engine is driving this propeller, the inner one, and the back engine is driving the outer one. So the pilot would naturally take off with both engines running, gaining maximum power to climb the aircraft to what we call a cruise altitude. The cruise altitude may be 7,500 feet. At that point, he would shut down one of the engines and only one would remain running. The prop on the engine not running would then be feathered to reduce drag. Should he now take that plane over the High Sierra and find out that that engine ceases to run and stops, he would then be flying with no engine. His objective is to simply start the second engine and continue his flight and land at the nearest airport under control as opposed to making a crash landing in the Sierra or any other place. The marketplace, the engine manufacturers and, pardon me, not the engine manufacturers, the aircraft manufacturers have tried to solve the problem by providing a parachute for the aircraft. You want to take a picture of that? Yep. We're trying to eliminate parachutes because once you pull the trigger for that parachute, you're no longer in control. The wind is now in control. And people have died even with aircraft that have parachutes. Our objective is to give the pilot control under any circumstance. And then secondly, by shutting down the second engine, you're conserving fuel and the fuel carried on board will now give you a longer range. That's the two main objectives of the exponential engine. How does the exponential engine differ from a conventional engine? You've got numerous power strokes and you've got a very small engine here that's lightweight for 120 horsepower. That's the, the trick that allowed us to provide extra propellers and two shafts and not have an overweight engine. This mechanism, called the cam crank, drives the, propell the uh, piston. There is no connecting rod. If my pencil tip would represent the connection of the piston to the cam crank, you can see we go through an intake stroke, a compression stroke, a power stroke, and an exhaust stroke. And we do that in 180 degrees. In a standard engine, that requires 780 degrees in order to get one power stroke. With this device, we're able to get four power strokes in the same degrees of rotation that every other engine gets one power stroke. Therefore, this engine can be one quarter the size or at the same size and displacement would be four times more powerful. That feature allows the engine to be compact, literally have two engines way less than and be smaller than an engine of equal size. So you can save a lot of weight on the airplane, which is of course critical. For That's the most critical thing 
on aircraft reduce the weight of the aircraft engine and airframe in order to increase the available payload, be it fuel or people. In terms of fuel consumption, how efficient is this compared to a normal? Unfortunately, we haven't been able to get a thousand miles from a gallon of gas, yeah. but it is it has a similar characteristic to any other engine. The faster you go, the more fuel you must burn. The slower you go, the less fuel you burn. So it's up to the pilot. He can leave both engines running to get maximum speed, provided the aircraft is capable of that speed, or he can use the power for climbing only at a reduced speed and then run on one engine and save fuel. Very, very interesting. What's, what's the status of uh, going to production with this engine and uh, when we are, can we expect to see it in, in the marketplace? We are just starting on production this summer. We're expecting to have the first engines available the end of the year. After which time we'll go to the FAA and seek certification for the engine. Currently, it would be usable in the, the uh, sport class and the experimental class. Currently, that's all that will be available. Hopefully, in about a year and a half, we'll have a certified engine. That sounds great. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you for coming.